Welcome back here with Money, Money, Money. And we have had an absolutely incredible morning because I've gone around making a series of digital payments to the auto wala, to the chai wala, and to the usual normal small kiosk merchant. And now here we are at the Axis Bank headquarters in Mumbai to try and make sense of all that's happening, this tectonic change that's taking place around us. Rajiv Anand, the Executive Director of Retail Banking at Axis Bank is here with us over the next two segments. Rajiv, thank you so much thank you for, uh, for, me, for hosting us in your beautiful office. You know, I, I must say I'm absolutely zapped because this was the clincher, right? While we make these digital payments, electronic payments for the bigger transactions, how do you do the smaller day-to-day -day, uh, sort of, uh, you know, how do you get those needs out of the way? Now, I want to start by asking you, it's been a phenomenal couple of days since the 8th of November. Life, I guess, has not been the same for you, has it? No, not at all. Not at all. I think uh, uh, it's a huge shift that we are seeing uh, uh, in the country. Uh, and I think this is the first time that the entire citizenry is participating. And I think in, and it's, and, and banks and, um, you know, branch banking in particular is really, you know, down there in the center mm. of all the activity that's happening. So it just keeps us busy all day. And I'm really, really proud of the stuff that uh, you know the branches have been doing, uh, being able to serve you know uh, customers at this point in time. I think I'm really mm -hmm. proud to uh, of the work that they've done. So you know, I'm not going to ask you about the day-to-day -day impact because notifications are coming in thick and fast, uh, <laughs> and it'll take its own time to Absolutely. settle. But in in the sort of not too distant future, what do you see changing? I mean, um, how will the customer approach towards retail banking change? Will we see eventually lesser trips to the bank? I mean, how, how does it all change, if at all, because of this massive demonetization move? So let's look at it in two parts. Uh, there are a lot of customers already. Uh, remember that the narrative just before this was about how nobody was coming, uh, um, customers weren't coming to the branches, mm. and they were all using internet and mobile and credit cards, etc. Mm. So there's that, a certain set of customers is already doing that. Mm. But there's another set of customers who are on the cusp. Mm. Uh, you know, still continue to use money, uh, will use a credit card or a debit card occasionally. Yeah. Uh, I think it, you're going to see a fundamental shift of those guys uh, onto digital platforms. Okay. Um, and now there's a whole gamut of uh, you know sort of digital or non-cash uh, instruments that are available: debit cards, credit cards. Most people are quite comfortable using debit cards. Remember yeah. that each of these customers uses the debit card at an ATM. They know their PIN, but you know what they do today is they withdraw money from an ATM and then go to a shop and pay in cash. Yeah when you could have easily used the ATM at a, uh, uh, the debit card at a post terminal. I think that will begin to happen. Sure. So, uh, you know, let, let me ask you further on that because that's what we did in the morning. We actually used uh, an m pos device yeah. and, you know, there was this small vendor, a guy who was selling eggs on the street and, you know, he could make a, a small token transaction which is three, four yes. rupees. Um, to what extent is this being spread out? How long will it take, you think? And what is the uptake, especially in the smaller towns of India? So, what, the way that we're targeting the small customers uh, is through that QR code mechanism, what you saw, uh, which is called M-Visa. Uh, Access Bank has been a pioneer within that. Uh, all that the customer needs to do is, is you know, scan that QR code uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the app on the, on the mobile phone, and the transaction is done. It takes, you know, sort of a few seconds. Um, the ability to get these guys on through that is very simple. Okay. Right, it's just a little bit of a uh, little bit of training. Uh, it's a little bit of uh, you know for him to understand, uh, and then he puts the sticker up, and boom, you you, you can see that sticker uh, as a customer. And for us to be able to scale this up uh, is very very easy, as opposed to the the traditional POS terminals, which you know which are in currently in short supply because of the huge demand. Mm. Uh, you know, then we've got to do KYC on the on the merchant and open a current account, etc. Here, it's much much easier. Oh, so the QR code, from your perspective, is easier to, much to easier. quickly sort of escalate and, and spread out there. That's correct. How quickly do you think this can be scaled up when we're talking about the smaller merchants and these smaller day-to-day -day transactions? Because that's where things are really getting stuck. So, um, like I said, I mean, we've seen this gigantic shift uh, that's happening. What is what is impeding us is is really. Um, you know, resources, whether it is, you know, in terms of people, whether it is in terms of post terminals, etc. But we are going, you know, very, very hard uh, at, uh, at acquiring new merchants, whether it is through, uh, through the QR code mechanism or post terminals. Uh, and we will continue to do so. We are, you know, sort of the leading players uh, within this space. But I think we will also need to see a greater participation from some of the other banks in terms of building and acquiring infrastructure in this country. Uh, the number of number of players, the number of banks who are big acquirers in this country uh, is just four or five. But and I think if we want to see this grow, 
um, in the months and years to come, uh, we will certainly need to see the other banks uh, participate in acquiring as well. And when you're saying uh, more infrastructure is required, are you actually talking about more devices as well? I mean, uh, given the the rush that I'm guessing has built up right now, uh, how quick is sort of uh, you know the pushback in terms of just having more of these devices and getting more people on these QR codes? So we are, um, you know, from a device perspective, the POS terminals, uh, we're putting out whatever is available. Okay. Uh, we've ordered, uh, you know, for another, uh, you know, sort of another supply. So we will we will get that going as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as far as M, uh, M visa or the QR code uh, piece is concerned, that's just about you know sort of reaching out to merchants on an individual basis. Because remember that mm -hmm. there is a little bit of assistance, a little bit of training that you need. So you've got to you know sort of get these guys going. I'm just curious, what questions do they ask? Is there any hesitation? How do you convince them to move digital to go digital? What, what's been amazing is um, you know especially over the last few days. Uh, the way that the message has, has flown all the way down mm. that, you know, sort of um, you know, cash is, is becoming more difficult to get and yeah. one of the ways that you can you can transact is through the digital technology. Mm. Um, the Chaiwala knows. Yeah. Uh, and and the, there and is the, no option right now. And you there is no option. Going, and so therefore, yeah. you, you know, if you can explain this to him simply, mm. he's an adopter. Okay, all right, fantastic. What we're going to do is we're going to take a very quick break on that note. On the other side, we're going to talk about another landmark technology, UPI, the Unified Payment Interface, how you can get onto it. In fact, we'll get Rajiv to do a small transaction. Let's see if Rajiv can send me some money via UPI on the other side.